Vaughn. Sure, yes, good morning. Um, like Terry said, we'll just do a quick Zoom review so that everybody can get the most out of the call this morning. Um, first, we'll ask that you keep your Zoom window open during the uh, meeting. There will be some presentation um, that you can follow along with. If you're dialed in on the phone, we'll make those materials available afterward through the form of uh, the meeting recording. Um, so we'll distribute that, like Terry said, as soon as it processes. We do ask that you keep your camera off and that you stay muted unless otherwise directed by the host. Um, this just helps us minimize background noise and distractions during the call. When it comes time for questions and discussion, um, you can indicate that you'd like to contribute or respond um, by using the chat. Uh, if you go to your bottom toolbar, so on the computer, if you're on Zoom, if you go to the lower portion of your screen, there's a toolbar and in the middle, um, there's a button that says chat. If you click on that, it'll open up a chat window um, that you can see where folks are adding commentary. So I'll put an example in there now. Um, if you have a question, you can do something simple like let us know that you'd like to contribute using um, that or you can type out your full question and we will address it when the time comes. If you're dialed in on the phone, you can use star nine. Um, star nine puts a signal on our screen that you want to contribute and so we will um, get to you when the time comes. We'll be monitoring that chat feed and taking participants in order, um, asking each person to unmute one at a time so that nobody's talking over one another and then we will also take phone participants last. Um, when it comes time to unmute, the toolbar is again where you're going to go on your computer. The far left um, corner in the bottom, there's a microphone looking button that says mute or unmute. If you click on that, it'll allow us to hear you when the time comes. Um, for phone participants, you can use star six to unmute yourself uh, when you are prompted to do so. And we can remind you of that throughout the call if necessary. Um, that's the end of kind of the quick overview. Terry, if you don't have anything else, I guess we'll pass it over to Senator Fenberg. That sounds great. Thanks, Julia. Senator Fenberg, when you're ready, please go ahead. Great. Um, well, thank you all. Uh, it looks like there's a, a whole bunch of participants, so um, uh, I appreciate you letting me uh, jump on and, and chat. Um, you know, I, we have, I, well, I guess I'll start by saying obviously we are living in some pretty crazy times um and really i kind of just wanted to connect to provide a bit of an update on what's happening from the state perspective the state level um but probably most importantly just connect and make sure you have my contact info and um that we can get some of yours for those who want to uh connect after the call um and and largely just to see what you're feeling what you're seeing on the ground um, and get, you know, get your thoughts and questions and feedback for especially not just what we do in this in this moment right now, but when we get back into session to, to sort of help inform the, the actions that we'll be taking. Um, so just a quick overview of where we are, and, and I'll try to keep my kind of overview pretty short so we can spend most of the time um, with questions and whatnot. Um, obviously, everybody knows that the governor declared a disaster emergency um, uh, quite a while ago, and shortly after that was the stay-at-home order that went into place. And what we, um, from a legislative perspective, we were right in the middle of session. So we have 120 days that we're allowed to be in session every year as a legislature, and that starts early January and basically ends early May every year. And that's a constitutional provision that we're not allowed to be there for 121 days. We have to actually be done with our work by, 100, by day 120. And so the whole, the whole stay at home order, not, not just the stay at home order, but you know, the, this crisis in general, obviously is thrown a wrench in basically every aspect of our lives. But from a state perspective, being right in the middle of legislative session uh, made things pretty, pretty awkward as well. So generally, out of those 120 days, the vast majority of our, of our bills that actually pass happen at the end of session because the first kind of 50% of session, I would say, is largely kind of working on the bills and stakeholder work and kind of compromises and negotiations. And then we, we pass a lot of those bills towards the end. 
um, that's the part that, that basically was taken from us when we had to leave. So most of our work, most of our legislative agenda is actually still pending. And um, I won't bore you with all the details, but when we left, we weren't sure if, if every day that we were gone was gonna count towards our 120, or if we were gonna be able to make up that time to finish up our work. Luckily, the Supreme Court weighed in and, and said that we do have some flexibility. So right now, we're not in session, but we plan to go back uh, May 18th. And that date was chosen because of the, the biggest piece uh, that's outstanding that we still need to do as a state is pass our budget for next year. And our, our year starts July 1st. So we're kind of getting down to the wire. <clears throat> um, usually we would have we would be passing our budget basically right now. Um, but we haven't even really started a lot of the work that we need to do that goes into the budget. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, when we go back on May 18th, the absolute priority <clears throat> is going to be passing the budget. And in some ways, it's a good thing that we hadn't passed our budget yet because the entire economic forecast and, and financial landscape has obviously changed um, overnight, basically. And so um, we will be getting a new budget forecast May 12th. And that is the forecast for this follow this next year that we will use to to write the budget. The um, the the we know <clears throat> things are not going to be good. I mean, we we were just a couple of months ago at the legislature. Our arguments were about how are we going to spend the surplus money in the budget, and how are we going to prioritize it? Were we going to increase funding for K twelve? Were we going to double down on transportation projects where what were we going to do with some of this money that we had because we had um maybe still have because everyone has sort of been impacted but we've had the strongest economy in this in the country and so our budget and our in our financial conditions as a state we're doing really really good um now we are at a place where we will get that that forecast may 12th but what we are being told by um by the folks who are working on that forecast is that we should be expecting a two to three and a half billion dollar cut in our budget. So we were at a place where we, we had a surplus, we, we had additional money than we had the previous year to spend, and now we are gonna be up to a three billion dollar cut from where we were. And to put that in perspective, that's, that's about 25% of our state budget that essentially just evaporated overnight. And so we, when we get back into session, we're largely gonna be focused on the budget and making those really difficult decisions on what do we cut. Um, but we also want to be cognizant of, of the impacts that this crisis is having and also the impacts that our budget cuts are going to have on our communities. And so um, we'll not only be doing the budget, like I said, but we'll also be working on some legislation that we hope will we'll be able to add some relief, um, whether it's regulatory relief, whether it's um, uh, making sure that we are spending the federal money that's coming into the state effectively and in a way that is most helpful for folks, uh, et cetera. So that's what we're working on right now is sort of putting together those ideas and that agenda, and then also obviously working through um, the, the, the quagmire that is going to be the budget. Um, the, the governor yesterday, folks probably saw, is, is starting to ease up on the, on the um, the social distancing orders. There's there's modeling that that um, has been shared with us, and I think some of it is actually public, and we could share it if folks are interested. But they they're epidemiologists, and and the the chief medical officer and and others are really watching this pretty closely, and they um, are are saying, you know, we've been successful. We have flattened the curve. Uh, things we definitely kind of avoided. Uh, worst case scenario over these last couple of weeks, but they're still preparing for the worst and, and hoping that it doesn't happen. But they're they're still building out, you know, a massive hospital inside the Colorado Convention Center, and and things like that. So the, the this is definitely not behind us. Um, I think uh, there's there's a whole lot more, unfortunately, to come. But I do think we are sort of getting to a place where the governor wants to start as much as possible normalizing some activities of our lives. Um, so the stay at home order will be lifted by the end of the month. 
but that doesn't mean that all of the restrictions will be lifted. Uh, uh, restaurants and bars are um, still going to have to be closed uh, potentially to in, uh, up until mid-May, um, but it's going to depend on the, the situation and the numbers and the data if, um, if they're going to be able to open even at that point. Um, so uh, some retail um, uh, stores will be able to open up uh, in the coming weeks. Um, but um, again, this is not like a, a overnight lifting of the restrictions, but this will be a very slow, gradual process. The goal is to keep social distancing to about 65% um, in order to, to stay on the track that we're on. Uh, and that's, it seems weird to put a precise number to it, but that's kind of how they do it at the state level. Um, and where we were was about 75 or 80 percent social distancing over these last, at least these last, this last week or so. Um, and so they, they feel confident they can start lifting some of those restrictions, um, but they're going to be keeping a close eye to make sure we're still not dropping below that 65 percent distancing uh, mark. So that is, you know, kind of the, the, the quick and dirty update. Obviously, there's a lot of pain out there. Um, you know, we are going to feel it in the state, on the state level, from a state budget perspective. That translates to K-12 education. That translates to transportation. That translates to um, uh, all of the human services um, funding that comes from the state into the cities and counties. Uh, but the cities are going to be feeling it as well. I think the city of Boulder obviously just furloughed a lot of employees. And, you know, the, the city is, is largely funded, frankly, by you guys, by sales tax. And since you aren't open, um, for the most part, that means the city is, is not collecting the revenue that it depends on for its, uh, for its budget. So um, there's, there's a lot more... Uh, I, unfortunately, a lot more pain to come. I think we are thinking the budget impacts of this crisis um, are going to last several years. This isn't going to be something that we're going to totally recover from uh, uh, soon. Um, so I think, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there in terms of the update and see where folks want to go. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to provide as much information as we have. Mindy is on the call as well, and um, you know, especially for things that people want to stay in contact on and, and touch base on as, as time progresses, we, we'd love to stay uh, in touch on those questions as well. Great, thank you so much for that update. Um, if people have questions, go ahead and start um, asking them in the chat box or just acknowledge and we'll call on you to ask directly. I know Chip has a couple of general questions um, Katie asked a question. I just responded back from a message that I received um, from Boulder County, but um, Katie's question, what does some retail stores mean? Will there be specific guidelines for retail or do we create our own guidelines? Yeah, so so that's a good question. Um, you know, we, uh, so, so the current order expires April uh, 27th. And to be totally honest, um, we assumed it was going to be extended <laughs> until we uh, watched the the press conference um, yesterday late afternoon from the governor. Um, so uh, we don't have all the answers yet. Um, surprise, surprise. But um, the 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 general uh, gist, I think, is that um, retail stores will start to be able to open for uh, things like um, curbside pickup uh, and having some of their employees start coming back to work. And then uh, I believe a, a week or week or two, and we can get this exact timeline and exact numbers um, out to folks, or we can get it out to to um, to someone that can then forward it to everybody. Um, the then the um, after a couple of weeks of that limited opening, they will be uh, opening allowing retail uh, stores to open fully, but to make sure that there is social distancing and PPE and whatnot inside those stores. So. That's, you know, the, the thinking I, I, I think is to ease into this rather than have it happen overnight so that they can watch data as it comes back. And if they need to make uh, adjustments that, that we don't go too far down the road before we can pull things back if, if we need to, if the health condition worsens. But that's the gist of the retail side of things on the, I think bars and restaurants are still uh, going to have to remain closed just because that's a little bit more of a sensitive uh, type of gathering. 
you know, going into a store, you may kind of walk by a couple of people here and there if you're browsing, but um, a restaurant and a bar obviously can can be a place um, that turns into a petri dish pretty quickly, I think. So, so that's that's kind of that's kind of what they're they're thinking. But we can get you much more information. I believe the official guidelines will be coming out in the next day or so. Um, so all we have right now, largely, is from what the governor announced yesterday, and the official guidelines will be coming out. Um, in a few days, but definitely before those uh, those restrictions are lifted. Senator, can you confirm um, gyms were on that list of um, businesses that can open effective April 27th? Is that correct? I think that's right. Um, Mindy might have more precise information on that. Um, I don't know if Mindy, if you're on or okay, she's saying she's checking. Um, uh, she messaged me privately. Um, Thank so you. uh so she'll look into that where i did i think there there was a mention about gyms um and and the other thing to keep in mind here is that there's a statewide order and then there is uh the the local um county health offices are allowed to go above and beyond those orders so so we will have a baseline um order and guidelines from the state but the local uh health departments are are able to extend restrictions or put in place additional restrictions. So just because there's a statewide relaxing of things like gyms, some counties might still restrict them and, and say that they need to be closed. Thank you. Chip, do you wanna unmute and ask a couple of questions? Sure, uh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Stephen, so much for uh, being sure. here and all your work. Um, I, I sort of have two questions, but I'll, st I'll start with one. You know, I feel like as the, the relief efforts are coming from, you know, the CARES Act and the federal government and other things, uh, it's, it's, I, it feels kind of to come up with an analogy, it feels like painting a house and we've got a lot of big paint, but now we need trim. So there's a lot of specific businesses that don't necessarily fit into the, the big thing. And I think that's uh, the cities and the, the chambers and, and groups like ours can be helpful with that. So to that end, I know the state has money for cities. I know much of it, uh, I think 1.1 1 .1, uh, uh, million has gone to the larger cities. No, you are, you are right with what you were about to say, Chip. It's a, it's a B. <laughs> billion, sorry. Billion. And, <laughs> yep. I know uh, it's crazy to imagine, but that's, that's right. <laughs> well, and also we know how quickly that'll go. So I yep. guess I'm curious uh, for a, a city like Boulder, uh, who does have a, a I want to say disproportionate, but I think that's a good thing, disproportionately number of local independent businesses who aren't getting support from being a larger, you know, national or, or multinational organization. And also with workforce that is outside of Boulder and not necessarily reflect, reflected in population counts. I wonder if you have thoughts on uh, how that money is being distributed uh, amongst the state two cities, because I think that's really where a lot of uh, the small businesses are going to be looking uh, in terms of kind of creating that more trim work, that detail of, of trying to get the businesses who don't necessarily fit w or haven't been able to take advantage for a number of reasons to the PPP and the idle loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good question. I, I guess what I would say is the CARES Act was, you know, an unprecedented and um, pretty impressive piece of legislation, especially with with how how big it was and how fast it happened. The unfortunate thing is that because it happened so fast, I think everyone was just, you know, felt like we were spiraling out of control and we just needed to inject money as soon as possible. I think that was right. But because it happened so fast, I think also at the same time, like, not everybody totally vetted that bill and knew exactly what the ramifications were. And, and we're obviously seeing some, some headaches with the implementation. And that's for the PPP program, that's for the idle loans. Um, but I think it's also, and, and I think we all know about some of those issues. And I know um, there's someone from SBDC that, that, will, that will talk and give an update on that. Um, and, and then there's obviously the, um, the individual stimulus um, checks that went out to individual families. Um, and then probably the, the one of the most important pieces was the unemployment um, benefits from, from the bill. 
And just so everybody knows about that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of a lot of folks or a lot of employees are um, are are using that. But the um, unemployment benefits are providing an, an additional six hundred dollars a week per person above what they normally would provide. And that just got released or just started to get released yesterday. Um, and it's backdated uh, until from from the end of March until until now. So if someone is on unemployment um, because of this crisis, um, they will automatically get a, a bump up in their in their payments in their accounts um, very soon for those last several weeks. Um, the other big piece about the about UI is that um, it's now available for self-employed and for 1099 or independent contractors and gig workers, which is a really big deal in and you know I think we're gonna have to scratch our heads and figure out how to navigate that in the future because a lot of those workers you know and, and their employers don't pay into that fund but but their employees are benefiting from it obviously I, I, I support that but I think we're gonna need to think about what we do long term um, for these types of um, these types of workers because they are making up a larger and larger portion of our economy in terms of direct payments and, and support um, from the feds that's coming through the state to the locals, there have been so many conversations on this and, and I wish I could say we had answers, but there's a few things hanging in the balance. So the, um, I think it came from the, the National Governors Association, which um, is only really the governors from the very large states that, that, were, that were super vocal and this is my understanding really kind of were the ones who put that 500,000 population limit in the CARES Act for which cities can get direct payments from the federal government. And I don't think everybody totally realized the impact of that at the time. But what that means here in Colorado is that five of our counties will be getting a, a very large amount of money. Uh, and, and none of our other cities or counties will get direct payments from the federal government. So those five counties are Denver, El Paso, Jefferson, Adams, and Arapaho, I believe. And um, and so they will be okay. They'll they'll get direct payments for all of the expenditures, for the most part, that they're making to get out of this crisis. Um, that leaves you know the Boulders and um, and the Fort Collins and all these other kind of medium-sized and smaller uh, cities and towns, um, kind of left out in the dark and needing to rely on the state for the state to, to grant out a share of the money that it got from the CARES Act to those local cities and counties. So that's the, the thing we are now trying to wrap our heads around is how do we do this distribution? To make things more complicated, we're still waiting on guidelines from the U.S. Treasury on how we're allowed to spend the money. So we're not sure if that money can be spent on more general programs or if they have to be incredibly narrow and only things that are directly related to purchases for the crisis, like PPE or ventilators and things like that. And so it's, it's helpful, but if it is incredibly limited, which we think it is going to be, it, it doesn't actually get us out of this crisis. It just helps pay for the immediate public health expenses. But it still means we have a $3 billion shortfall in our state budget, which means uh, major cuts to K-12 literally could mean shutting down schools across the state. So um, the, the moral of the story, I guess, is that the CARES Act was helpful, but there are some issues in it that are um, either they were overlooked or we didn't totally understand at the time. And that is why it is so, so, so important that there is an additional package from the feds. And, and I think they're working on an additional interim package right now to provide money to backfill PPP and the EIDL program, which is great because there's so many folks that, that missed out on that program because they, they didn't get their funding before they ran out. Um, but, but just or potentially more important for the long term is that there needs to be a, an additional package that is helping states and cities and counties get out of the, the major deficits that they're going to be in in the next couple of years. And so that's what I would say if folks are talking to members of Congress or, or um, you know, have na national associations and things like that, that that's really the most important thing that can happen right now is that there is a commitment to get additional funding into the states and to the local governments. We, once we get those guidelines from the treasury, we will know a little bit more about how um, the money will be distributed to cities and counties from the state. 
um, but it's likely going to be you know, relatively narrow in, in that the counties and the cities have to apply to get expenses um, repaid by the state through that money. It probably won't be just like a large block grant that then the cities and counties can decide how to spend as they, as they wish. Um, that money can go to local governments, but it's not really available for, um, for, for businesses unless it funds some sort of business support program that eventually does trickle down to those businesses. Um, but that's kind of the update right now. We're still waiting on some of those guidelines from the feds, but the, the reality is, is that after we get this, in, this interim PPP and idle backfill passed, hopefully this week, um, we really do need to, to start working on an additional tranche of money for the locals in the states. Senator, thank you so much. We want to respect your time and know that you had to jump off at 930. So I don't know if you want to say anything else or. Um, it, if I've got it, I've, my schedule changed a little bit. So I do, I could do a few more questions if there are any, um, but also happy to follow up with folks afterwards if that's better. Um, I know Chip had one more question. Okay. If anybody else um, would like the Senator's office to follow up with them, please remember to put your name in the chat box so I can send them a list with emails. Chip, do you want to ask one final question? Sure, and this is kind of a, a big question, and I know you're probably uh, kind of swimming in a lot of crisis moments. I think that the moment we're in has kind of also amplified or, or underlined a lot of other issues where we deal with in the state uh, through legislation, um, some tax structure issues, some uh, support, you know, the things we all know about support for homelessness and housing and various things. I'm curious if you can speak to the appetite in the legislator at this moment. Is there an appetite to kind of look at sustain, like some bigger legislation projects or are you focused on just getting through this support and or where, where are people looking right now? Is this a... Yeah, no, that's a really good question, Chip. I, I think um, th there's a few factors, right? So on one hand, we're not totally sure that when we go back May 18th, that, that we'll spend the rest of our session um, starting on May 18th, or if we'll get the budget done and a few other critical things and then adjourn again to come back later in the summer when, it's, when things have settled again. So, so we're still figuring that schedule out and that's gonna be, um, that'll impact sort of your question because uh, if we do have time to come back later and you know, take a deep breath and, and then really get a sense of where things are and what needs to happen, then I think there's a little more room for that. Um, the other option that we're pondering and we won't know for a little while is, a, is doing a special session either later in the summer or in the fall. And a special session generally has to be called by the governor and it has to be around a pretty narrow topic. Um, but we don't want to sort of decide just yet because we don't know exactly what the, um, you know, what, what, the, what the most pressing needs are going to be once this is all over. Um, so, there, so I guess I'll preface what I'm saying with, with that, that, that there's still more to decide and there, there may be more bites of the apple even this, this year on doing some bigger things. But when we get back, I think the, the priority will be the budget and then a few other mission critical things like our School Finance Act, which is like kind of how we decide how to fund K-12, like how it's divided. Um, and then there's a handful of other kind of housekeeping things, that administrative things that we just have to get done for the government to keep operating. Um, and then I really think the, the next priority um, is going to be specific issues that respond to the public health crisis. Um, so that could be a number of things, but probably more around, um, you know, individual public health, but also our, our healthcare system and what, whatever we need to do there to shore things up. But then secondly, also um, figuring out what we need to do for economic security for, for both families and for small businesses, especially. And that's the thing that I would say um, the more ideas you have, the better, and please do send those to us. We're, we're honestly very interested in hearing everything um, right now, whether it's easing up on some regulations or um, doing a, a, you know, a timeout on something. Um, it, those, are, those are on the table, right? So if there's something that is really holding a business or an industry back, um, 
I personally, I want to hear what it is. And if there's maybe, maybe, you know, deleting it from the statutes isn't feasible, but you could do a five year timeout or something to provide some breathing room. Um, and that could be on regulations, but it could also be on things related to, um, to tax, uh, um, property taxes and sales taxes and things like that. The only thing I would say is that the constant um, uh, question we're going to be kind of wrestling with is whatever we change when it comes to taxes and the tax structure has, you know, uh, a, an impact downstream on our communities. So, you know, easing up on property taxes meaning, means that we're, we're kind of sticking it to the counties and they're going to then have to make even deeper cuts than what they're already faced with. So we just need to make sure we're approaching it in a way that makes sense and doesn't actually worsen some of these short-term problems. But, um, but long story short, yes. And if folks have ideas or specific things, um, would, love to, would love to hear about it. Personally, I'm interested in allowing people to take margaritas to go uh, even after this crisis is over because that was one of those temporary things that the governor allowed in this moment. Um, but, uh, but in all seriousness, I mean, there, there could be things like change, slight changes to business regulations like that, but it could also be bigger, like you're saying, like more systemic. Great. I appreciate it. I think in any case, whatever direction you go, you, we know you have your, your work cut out for you and we really appreciate you being there for us in, in, uh, in the, the Capitol building sure. here. So thank you for your work and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, yeah, and, and just real quick, um, Mindy did find that there was some some guidelines on gyms, um, and uh, okay, so it looks like she posted uh, in the chat um, some of the, the the website that you can find some of the more detailed information. But it looks like personal training is okay to open with some uh, precautions, but we're still looking into what it's going to mean for for like larger, more traditional gyms, um, right. and 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 when they can open. Great, thank you so much. There's one uh, question from Kristen in the chat around the, the and we've we've heard this from a, a few folks about the unemployment with the the six hundred dollar uh, bump in the unemployment creating some some challenges for some employees. That's going to be more than they're making uh, at work for for a moment. So mm -hmm. the challenge of um, your employees making more not coming to work. Do, is there any way you can address that or want to? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. This whole six hundred dollar thing is, is, I think, kind of confused um, the entire like concept of unemployment insurance for some some areas. Um, and and believe me, I, I I know what you're saying. I I it's not my main gig, but I have a side gig where I I, I own a, a small business. It's a bar up in the mountains, and and we got a small PPP loan, and and it's like. To get that forgiven, you have to get everybody back on payroll, but some of your employees aren't going to want to be on payroll because they would make more by being on unemployment now. Um, and so I, I hear you. That's that's a sticky thing that I think people are just now starting to totally wrap their heads around because that $600 and other things have now just gone live. It really is more of a question for the federal government and for the Small Business um, Administration. So hopefully the next uh, right. person can can help with that because that is those are rules that are administered by the feds not the state, um, but uh, if there are additional issues that come up, um, y you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to help navigate it with you. There's also another program at the state level on, um, on, on like, I forget what exactly they're calling it, it's like pay share or cost sharing, where you can actually put people on payroll partially, and then the state, if, if, you, if you're reducing their hours significantly, the state um, can help backfill to pay for the rest of that person's normal salary. Uh, work share is what it's called. <laughs> and then you just texted me. Um, and, and so that's another option that I think hasn't gotten the headlines that some of these others have. Um, but it's another thing to look into if you want to bring people back, but not bring them up to the, the full level that they were at before the crisis. Great. With that, it seems like a perfect segue to, to move to Susie with the Small Business Development Center. Uh, but thank you again for your time. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. And, and let's keep in touch with this group, all right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And with that, Susie, um, I know you're on the call and, and you've joined us before, so welcome back. Thank you. And uh, I'll just uh, not spend any more time. I'll just introduce you and let you take it away. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Um, 
So, you know, it's a new day in the world of um, government funding. And so, uh, so I'll start off by saying that the first thing that I heard uh, this morning was that they've changed some of the rules with the PPP money and how um, business owners are applying. And so that's new. Um, so we had been telling people and the process was if you applied for a PPP and you were taking draws, so say you're an LLC or a sole proprietor um, and you're an owner and you file for the PPP for your employees, then you would file separately to get money for yourself. Um, now they just changed that since I just heard of it this morning that um, they don't want people or business owners to apply multiple times. They want one application. So the money hasn't been replenished yet, though I know today things are going to change. Um, so we're going to be hearing more, hearing more about additional funds for, for uh, CARES Act. And um, we will talk about some of that tomorrow on our webinar and I'll go through those. But, but what I wanted to say to everyone on this call is if you have applied for a PPP and you applied separately for, to get funding for your, some money for yourself to carry on, you may wanna to talk to your bank and just make sure um, that if you're in that queue that you've, you know, that you've applied and uh, it's correct because it's changed. So that's the new, the, I think that's the, the biggest thing that, that's changed since I've heard. And then obviously yesterday they allowed um, 1099 and sole propri proprietors and gig workers to apply for unemployment, which was mentioned a little bit earlier on this call. So uh, that's a nice, you know, that's nice that um, you can apply for that. So, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, just like the Senator was saying, it's crazy times with, with, um, you know, the, the SBA funding, but tomorrow we're going to do a uh, webinar at 10 o'clock, the 22nd on alternative funding. And we put this together because of the frustration with the PPP loans and the idle loans and the advanced loans. So this is really to talk about what else there is. We'll cover a little bit about the changes with PPP because we'll know more by tomorrow morning. But uh, Mike O'Donnell from Colorado Lending Source, uh, Jason Jacksack from Colorado Enterprise Fund and Ulysses Fernandez from the Minority Business Office will all be our panelists at 10 o'clock. And so there's a, uh, a sheet that's been floating around, a Google Doc or Google Sheet that I know that Terry's shared with you guys. Um, it comes from our state office and the MBO has been uh, putting that together with different grants and things. Um, I encourage you to look at that. We'll, we'll cover some of them tomorrow. Um, we're also gonna talk about uh, some of those Main Street loans and opportunities that haven't been mentioned in the, in the press. I know the Treasury was supposed to buy some notes to open up some funds for, for Main Street businesses. So Mike O'Donnell is gonna be talking about that a bit. And then Thursday at 10 o'clock, we're doing a second webinar this week. So we normally only do one at 10 on Wednesdays, but this week we're doing one on uh, commercial lease tactics and negotiation strategies. So for any of you that, a lot of you have good relationships with your landlords, but if any of you are in a, in a space where you're looking for some uh, advice or, or some uh, negotiation strategy, then Mark Casey is going to do that from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So a one hour there on the 23rd. You can register for, for those, um, Terry's got those pulled up or Julia, one, one of you, whoever's driving the, the train. Um, so you can see, you can register for those for free. Then the other thing I wanted to tell you guys about is, so the SBA gave, gave the SBDCs across the nation some additional funding to help uh, businesses in COVID, you know, that are dealing with the COVID crisis. So we are working on adding more financial resources, more consultants on our team to help businesses individually with, with, a, um, with workout plans. So if you are looking for some help with kind of 
taking what you have now and not only getting through the COVID crisis, but also saying, hey, I want to shift my business. I want to see some opportunities where I might have missed um, some distribution channels, or maybe I, I want to uh, look, have somebody do an audit of my, of my finances and say, okay, this is another way that you can do things to, to uh, scale your business. We are doing that. It's at no cost to you. So what that just means is that you get more consulting time with us and uh, we, you know, we love our downtown businesses. So, uh, you know, we're, we're here for any of you. If, if any of you are stuck, um, I think that um, the downtown team has done such a good job at reaching out to our team and letting us know. Uh, you can Slack me, I'm on the Slack channel. And so you can find me and ask questions or if you need resources, then, uh, you know, please reach out because because we're, you know, we're certainly here for you. But I think that we're going to find out a little bit more about what's going on with these these loans and things um, by the end of day today, tomorrow morning. So I would I would definitely say, you know, dial in if there's uh, any topics that that you want us to to research and, and bring panelists on board, I think. Um, you know, we're happy to do that for you as well. And yeah, I mean, I think that those are my, those are my main updates, but definitely um, the, the uh, webinar tomorrow will be recorded too. So you can always go to our website and, and watch the recording. So you can see um, this, these are all part of that keeping your business together in a crisis webinar series. So we've done three already. They're all recorded. Feel free to go back and, and uh, listen to those or, you know, we'll post the recordings the day after the webinars uh, this week. And we'll keep them going as long as you guys find that they're relevant. Does anybody have Thank any? Thank you, Susie. Mm -hmm. Yep, oh, thank you. I was just gonna open it up too. If you have questions or would like to talk, if you could just make a note in the chat box. Julia, can you jump on really fast and remind people who are on the phone what they need to do? Yes, if you're on the phone and you'd like to contribute, just dial star nine on your keypad and that will indicate to us that you have something to add. Susie, there is a question about UI, so I know that that's not exactly um, your forte, but I, I don't know if you can answer it. Um, if your employees don't come back when you open, then they voluntarily quit and will not be eligible for UI. Is that correct? Hmm. So that's interesting. So, so I wonder if this person is saying like they offered them to come back and they decide they elected not to, then to I me, that is, so. yeah, I mean, to me, that is, I don't think that they changed all the rules with unemployment. I think they've just opened the doors for this extra cash. So, you know, if somebody quits and I mean, Aaron Jones from Workforce Boulder County would probably be a better person. And I'm happy to take this question and, and um, send a, a like an official response because I'm not the expert in it, but um, you know, I mean, having employees in the past, I mean, if they elect not to come back, then that's, you know, that's their choice. So, um, but I can certainly follow up with an official, you know, an official answer if there is one <laughs> that's different than, you know, now than there ever has been. Great, Alicia, we'll follow up then for sure with that. Um, yeah. Everybody's being really quiet this morning. So, does anybody else have anything to ask or to comment on? Susie, this is Chip. Um, maybe I can just ask you kind of a general question. Sure. Um, in terms of the work we do at Downtown Boulder Partnership and Advocacy, yeah. Um, are you finding um, key themes in terms of the challenges? that you're experiencing businesses having in accessing the PPP funds uh, that we might not be aware of. I know we're, we're hearing a lot, a lot about it, but if, if you were to rewrite it really quickly in the next round, are, are there major items that you are seeing as being bigger obstacles for more businesses? I think a lot of it has been the question of, of um, how does the business owner pay themselves and I think also the people that have gotten the money um, have been concerned with, you know, like there's questions that have come through with, can I give my employees, can I bring back less employees and give them raises? Like that's a, that's a common question. And, and the answer is like, 
the reality is you have to keep to the head count, you know, that you said that you were going to bring back. And so you can't, you know, if you said you were bringing back five people and you end up bringing back three and you want to give those three a raise, then, you know, you might not get that forgiven. So I think that most of the questions are, are either, you know, it's, it's around filling out the application or once you get the money, can I, you know, like figuring out, can they wiggle with it? And there's a little room for that, but you know, for the most part, it's, you know, it really comes down to headcount and the percentage of, of that spend that you're doing on payroll, which has to be 75%. And, and did I understand for kind of a follow-up, one of the things we've heard is that, that uh, eight week uh, time frame. Did we hear that, that they're looking at maybe extending that? I think one of the challenges we hear with certain types of businesses who are trying to get the PPP loan to stay open but then really legally nor practically can open in the next mm -hmm. unforeseen period. So that it's, it doesn't make sense for like a hair salon or even some retail to bring back employees, but they have to bring them back before that period. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a talk of that period perhaps being extended? I have not heard of that. I have not heard of an extension. The, what I've heard is you have eight weeks from when you, you know, when you get approved for the, the loan, you have to take some disbursement out. So some could mean not all, but, but see, here's the thing that the, the banks don't get their money until there's a full disbursement. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. so they're going to be looking for, you know, they're, they're due, right. By doing the loan that I haven't heard, you know, that could change their chip. Like, honestly, that could change in two hours that they they may extend it but i'm not i'm not quite sure and i think some of it is tying into when will you know when will some businesses be able to to open back up so i can certainly as soon as i hear something like that i'll share it with you guys and you can post it you know and send it out to everyone but um i haven't i haven't really heard of that um you know as anything concrete and I know it's a big question. It's a big ask, right? So, you know, what is a business to do if they can't, you know, if they can't bring their hair salon and they can't bring back their employees? But I think that's where the unemployment, you know, the unemployment comes in, you know, that, and that's where you have to kind of make those business decisions on, you know, you just have to communicate with your, your staff and, and do what's right, you know, like whatever they can do. It seems like we keep having a lot of questions um, that go back to UI. So Susie, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'll ask this, but if you don't know, it's okay. I'll write them all down and we'll try to get other people yeah, to answer. Yeah, if you give them to me, I'll get the answers. You know, I'm happy to get the answers for you. Um, okay, great. Yeah. Um, this one is, how does partial employment, if we hire a previously 40-hour person back for 20 hours, how does the extra $600 apply? To their UI. Oh, so they try to, you know, um, so they're trying to file for unemployment for the other half of their payment, their salary. Yeah. Um, you know, send it to me and I'll get an answer. Honestly, like I'm, I, unfortunately, I'm not. I am not the unemployment. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I mean, I know like high level stuff, but ultimately. Um, yeah, send it to me and I'll, I'll get one of, we do have specialists that, that can answer those questions. So um, I'll have, I'll get all the answers and then give them to you. And yeah, we can do that today. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. There, please, you've been so helpful. Um, there is a question. How can I check on the status of my loan through the SBA? Isn't this sad? The answer is you can't. The answer is you can't. They, there is no way to check your status right now for for your loan um yeah like even the 800 number like they've just basically just gone to the wind <laughs> for now i'm sorry they're not answering they're not answering the status they're reaching out to people uh to business owners um from the from the idle perspective whatever was left they were reaching out to people from the um ppp perspective and everything's just frozen until funds open and so there's no there's no checking and that's terrible but that's true 
Um, it's been kind of quiet. Let's see. Um, anybody else have any questions on any of the other types of loans while Susie's here on the phone? And again, I've written down all of the UI questions that I'll touch base with her on and we'll try to get you an answer. Yeah, the good um, thing about me is one. if I don't know the answer, I'll get it. I will get it for you. So we'll get those answers to you today. Let's see, a couple more just came in. Um, an application was conditionally approved after the news that the SBA ran out of the PPP money. Do I still get the loan or do I wait for the new bill to pass? If it was, so it was conditionally approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just stay in line basically. It's like stay in line and wait for them to, you know, to fill the coffers back up and, you know, we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, I know that you know, there, there definitely were big considerations this time with, you know, like the, the little guy, you know, some of the, some of the small businesses kind of got, you know, yeah, conditionally approved and stuck in a queue, but I am really hoping that um, we hear some good news today. I, I've got my fingers crossed. So just stay in line. Um, let's see. Here's another one. We received funding for our PPP loan via First Bank. Should we work with them on the forgiveness piece or is that something we do with the SBA via the SBA? You work with them on the forgiveness piece? Because ultimately they're the administrators of, of the PPP loans. The idle loans were through the SBA. And the advance was the forgiveness piece of that. So um, work, with, work with your bank. Great. Um, anybody else, is there anybody on the phone that has any questions or comments or anybody else that wants to talk to Susie directly? Um, somebody is asking if Chip and or I'm sure Susie can explain the chamber loan options. Oh yeah. Do you want to explain that Chip, their program? Because didn't it, the applications that like had to be in by yesterday, right? Yeah. The, so the chamber uh, working with the city and, and a, a lot of a handful of um, philanthropists in the community uh, propped up a, a fund. I think it was f up to 400,000, maybe a little mm -hmm. more. Um, and it was a, 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 a grant, a small business grant. The applications were due yesterday. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not hard to imagine that that will, ex there will be another round of that, but so far there's not. Um, I, I don't know all the details that the, the uh, community foundation was administering that fund um, and um, but it's a it's a granting program that the the chamber and the city and the community foundation and the, the business alliance uh, which we're part of put together but um, it, I don't know much about that I think that um, you know Susie mentioned earlier that the alternative funding webinar tomorrow that is tomorrow right I think there'll yeah. be a, a lot of um, there'll be a lot of resources on that and there's 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 more and more little funds popping up that I think will have some impact and help people in different ways I, if you haven't if you didn't get an application in for the the chamber thing yesterday I think at least for this round it's uh, too late and I don't know the I don't know the details of when they're trying to fund that, but I know they were re working really quickly to get that money out the door. And I don't know, um, Susie, if you have any more info on that than I do. No, I just knew that, um, I knew that they were wrapping up the application process yesterday and that, yeah, to your point, they're, they're going to try to distribute that, that money as soon as possible. But, you know, from a, from a funding standpoint, you know, there's the government money, there's this, you know, the city initiatives and all that. Um, but then, like I said, there, there's some really cool uh, grants around the, around the country that, you know, it's just, you just have to find them. And, and some of them are listed on that, on that uh, sheet that, that the state's providing. And we'll send a link out again um, after the webinar tomorrow. But, um, you know, businesses that just are passionate about supporting, you know, main streets and, so 
we'll, like I said, we'll try to cover some of that also, because I know not everybody wants a loan. They want, you know, everybody wants grant money. Um, so we'll try to talk about those different things tomorrow for sure. But yeah. Susie, I'm going to try to get in just a few more quick questions. Um, can you clarify when businesses need to hire back employees after the PPP loan has been approved? So it's supposed to be, the whole intention of the PPP loan is to hire people back during, you know, during the shutdown. So, you know, within those eight weeks um, after you get your loan money. So it's an eight, it's an eight week timeline. You can't just kind of hold on to it for, for a while. It's, it's definitely got a, a time period. And again, though, I'm going to caveat this by saying they could change this in a couple of hours. So that, but that's the answer right now. It's eight weeks from when you get the, from when you get the loan. And you don't have to hire them back like a right away, but you have to start take, using the money within, I think, 10 days. You have to take your first disbursement, but you have, you have eight weeks to, for the forgiveness piece, then it's a 1% loan. Uh, regarding PPP, will the individual banks then be doing the audits at the end of the forgiveness period or the SBA? The banks, the banks will be providing the information. And I, there's some legalese about, you know, they have to, the intention was to make it easy for businesses to get the money quickly. That was the intention. And then, so the, you know, the banks are like the stewards of, you know, of, um, reporting those funds. But I, I'm also thinking that when it comes tax time, you know, there's going to be some reporting that, that needs to be done. But it's the banks that are the administrators of the PPP loans. And then, like I said, the idle loans, that's the SBA. But the idle loans didn't have as many requirements on, you know, it's more like a small business, like a traditional small business loan that with a low interest rate. So it's the banks that are responsible and they're different. They, they're kind of looking at, they have to interpret it. They're kind of having to interpret it on their own because, you know, just like the Senator said, the cash came out and then, but there weren't any tight, it's not black and white still with a lot of things. And they change things a little bit each time too. So um, yeah, it is the banks. Um, Susie, I'm going to do one more question and then um, thank you and not keep you any longer and then Chip will jump on for a minute. Again, if you've asked questions and they weren't addressed, um, please know that we will work to get the answers off of this call. Um, what is the payback period for the um, idle loan? The payback period, okay, let me think. I believe it was 10 year term at 3.75% interest, and I think maybe 2.75 if you were a nonprofit. So it's a 10 year, it's a 10 year term. And I think, I thought that it was like, there was a timeline when you, before you had to start, like maybe six months uh, until it, it kicked in with, with having to make any sort of payment or before interest kicked in, yeah. Great. Um, Susie, thank you so much for taking yeah. a moment to join us and to answer questions. Anything um, you we really yeah. appreciate everything. Yeah, just send me the questions that um, that I couldn't answer or if any more come up and I'll, you know, I'll get the answers for you. Um, whatever you guys need. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Chip, do you want to take over? Sure. I know we're coming up on the, the top of the hour, just past the top of the hour, so I'll be brief. Um, I, you know, I don't have a whole lot to update. We're sort of uh, in the, I feel like we're in the, the end of the beginning of this, um, kind of shifting into, you know, how to, how to create some stability and, and understand what's next. Um, there's still a lot of uncertainty and a lot of confusion. So, uh, I, you know, I will I will encourage all of you on the call and, and your neighbors. It, now we're starting to, as I kind of mentioned to the Senator, really look at the nuanced and the specifics. And, and so if there are specific issues you're having, 
um, or your neighbors are having, please reach out to us if we can help in any way. Um, you know, you know we're, we really want to, one, understand what the, the impacts and issues everyone's having are and see, you know, whatever we can do to help and to advocate on your behalf with our, our representatives on every level of government. Um, I know every level of government is struggling as well to try to, you know, take care of all of the things they need to take care of. So we need to be a really loud voice in, in representing the, the business community and, and uh, how, we can, how we can support our businesses to get through this. Uh, so please do keep in touch. We're, you know, we're, we are, as I said, kind of moving into this, what's, what's it going to look like next? How do we bring people back to downtown safely? How do we communicate to the community that is it is safe and how do we make sure that you know both our public spaces our stores our, our restaurants our our office spaces all are safe and, and kind of understanding what that looks like in this next phase uh, so we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about that i know there was a question about rent uh, about rent uh, in there, and you know, I I wish I had a good answer for that. We are having a, a round table with some of the property owners this afternoon uh, to try to really understand what options there there could be and how we can advocate for uh, leniency and support around that. But it's it's going to be difficult, and it's going to be you know very individual conversations with landowners and 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 your your landlords, and so. Um, you know, we'll continue to to advocate and be a part of that conversation as much as possible. Uh, but please, please keep us in the loop as you're, you know, if there are big challenges other than of the obvious big challenges that we're all facing that we know about, if there's specific things we can either help with or at least should be aware of, I, I would really encourage you to reach out to myself, to Terry, to Cindy, our, our membership uh, folks. So. Um, you know, I don't have much other uh, other specific updates. We are really kind of keeping an eye on the downtown and, and increasing our security efforts and, and really trying to manage that as much as best as we can. Um, we're doing quite a bit of, of, you know, really trying to do what we can in terms of marketing. I know that, you know, Terry and the crew have been working on the, the Ferry Festival in a virtual capacity just to kind of keep keep downtown and the downtown activities and people's uh, consciousness as, as they're not able to come downtown at, in the way that they used to. So, um, you know, we'll continue to, to keep downtown as much as we can in everybody's uh, consciousness and, and really work with all of you to try to understand how to, you know, how to get through this next, next stage of, of stabilization and, and sustaining what we can. So. I, I wish I had a more optimistic uh, report at this point, but I think, you know, we are starting to come into a new, another phase of, you know, what can we do? I think there's a lot of, a lot of great conversations. Our, our partnerships with the, the chamber and SBDC and the city and, and the community foundation and others have really been strengthened through this. So I think we'll, we'll be able to rely on each other for more increased resources as we move forward. And I really, appreciate all of you being here and, and part of that conversation as well. So I'm, I'm happy to try to field some questions if, if people have questions or specific thoughts. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to mention two things really quick in case anyone else wants to comment after this. Um, we are working on um, a fun bingo promotion that um, Laurel from Two Soul Sisters brought to us from another market. So keep an eye out for an opportunity to kind of engage virtually with our audience and um, get more people involved in what you guys are doing. And also working on um, a cool video um, that we want to put out on social that will involve um, hopefully a lot of businesses. Uh, we're just finalizing details, so look for separate emails coming from Julie and myself in the next day or two, but we're hoping to roll these things out um, next week. Anybody else have any comments or questions for the DBP staff? Chris is on the call. If you have any operations questions, um, 
attendees on the call if you have any membership questions. I will add um, a, a little bit of good news. As, as I think you all know, we put together an employee uh, um, employee support fund um, and started raising some money. And I, I think since our last call, we were able to distribute some funds. Cindy, are you on? Do you want to give us a quick update on what we were able to do with the that? Sure. Um, we we sent out 22 checks on Monday, yesterday, to um, the nominees that we got from our business community. Um, and a few more will go out today or tomorrow, we just had to confirm addresses. Um, as you can see, we have almost 25,000 in the fund, so there is money there. We've received a couple more nominations since we sent the checks out, but there is money in the fund if you have employees who are in need. So definitely um, consider that and um, share it uh, with anybody you know. And also, if you're looking for something to do, you can sign up to do the run. It's kind of a fun thing. And anybody who's signed up for the run is entered in a drawing to win a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, we have five of them each month to any business of their choice in downtown. So that's another way we're trying to support you guys. Thanks. And look for um, Tulip Ferry, virtual Tulip Ferry event happening on Sunday. We, um, Anna was able to secure Jeff and Paige to do their annual performance. They'll be streaming it live. So again, we are trying to keep everybody as engaged as possible. Anybody else questions or comments? Chip, any final words? Uh, thank you, Terry. Um, and th thanks everyone on the call. Uh, everybody please stay safe and, and uh, keep in touch. All right, thanks everybody, have a good day.